thank you all for joining us here this evening. We really appreciate your being here. And we welcome those who are joining us live on Facebook and via Zoom. Whatever works for you works for us. We begin our Wednesday evening service with meditation. So I invite you simply just to get still, knowing that you're in your right perfect place at the right perfect time. We're going to play God is the love that I am. You're welcome to chant along with that. Let the words repeat silently in your mind. Or just simply your favorite mantra. Or simply, I breathe in, I breathe out. I breathe in, I breathe out.
Welcome to those who have joined us during our meditation. We are so glad you're here virtually and in person. Those of us that are here in person, please make sure your cell phones are silenced. And let us begin with our opening chant with the radiant Tina Meeks. God is in this place. And indeed, God is in this place. And let us just pay attention to that wonderful Godness, that goodness that fills this place, that welcomes us, that aliveness and awakens each and every person here. God is that living energy that thrives in, through, and as each and every person here. God is the love intelligence of the universe that is our greatest cheerleader. It is just sustains us and nourishes us and guides us along the way. There is absolutely no separation between me and God, through any of us and God, for God truly created us on purpose and for purpose, and it is our adventure in this thing we call life to discover what that is. And there are lots of twists and turns that are absolutely delightful, and maybe not so, but that's okay, because that's part of life and part of living. We know that God is always there loving and supporting us as we go through our daily travels and our daily uh, chores and tasks, that these are all acts of love, of living, of giving, of expressing who we are, of this God emanation that lives and just lives to express in, through, and as us. I know this is true for me, and I know this is true for each and every person here, that it is our great pleasure to be of service to God. And I give thanks for this knowledge. I give thanks for this church that teaches these truths so eloquently. I give thanks for our singers, for our musicians, for our support staff, for Reverend Sydney, who just really listens to God, that God speaks in through and as her tonight. And that we all listen, not with our ears, but with our hearts. She speaks directly to our hearts. And it is our good pleasure just to sit back and relax and breathe in the knowledge and the wisdom of this evening service. I say thank you, God, for bringing us all here together and knowing so. I just simply release it into the law of mind, knowing it is already done. And together we simply say, Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread and forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. And lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
there's a hero if you look inside your heart you don't have to be afraid of who you are there's an answer if you reach into your soul and the sorrow that you know will disappear and then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone look inside you and be strong and you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you it's a long road when you face the world alone no one reaches out a hand for you to hold you can find love if you search within yourself and that emptiness you felt will disappear oh, oh. and then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone look inside you and be strong and you'll finally see the truth that a hero lies in you You'll find the way. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. And you cast your fears aside. And you know you can survive. So when you feel like hope is gone, reach inside you be strong and you finally know the truth that a hero lies in you you know a hero lies in you I came in earlier while Tina and, and Sam were rehearsing, and she said, is that going to work for your talk? Is that going to work? And I said, if it didn't, I'd change my talk, because <laughs> that's the talk right there. And we claim a hero. We claim a hero. We don't beg the hero. We don't beseech the hero. And yet, you know what we do? We really do. Oh, please, God, save me. Oh, please. And we really, we, we put a lot of stock in the idea of hope, right? And that's fine. 
we hope that God will save us. We hope that God will change us. We hope that, that God out there, the one with the anger issues who fell off his meds, is going to do something to make it better. We really, and here's the thing, and I remember hearing this a few years ago, and, and I, it just kind of stopped me in my tracks. Hope is not a strategy. Hope is not a strategy. I will tell you that love is, but hope is not. Hope is not a strategy. So I was listening to an interview yesterday with Drew Barrymore, the, the spiritual goddess Drew Barrymore. Who knew, right? And she said, don't placate the phantom they. Don't placate. In other words, don't perform for the phantom they. Don't gear your life towards the phantom they. Don't spend any energy trying to shape yourself, mold yourself, be that person for the phantom they. And in this town, it's really easy to do because this is the entertainment industry, and so it's all about getting the job and am I what they want? I hope I get it. God, I hope I get it. You know, <laughs> sorry, I'm not going to go into chorus line. Five, six, seven, okay. But we, you know, we, am I going to be what they want? Am I going to be what they want? But I love what she said. Don't placate the phantom they. Don't live according to the phantom they. You know, it's all about what will they think. Or we all have our 3 a.m. team, right? The one that wakes you up. So what, what does my 3 a.m. team want me to believe about myself? That's not true. You know, no, you have to do it this way. You're not good enough that way. You're too tall. You're too whatever. Um, what will my right and perfect mate, whom I haven't met yet, or the boss who hasn't hired me yet, or coworker, friend, stranger on the street, what will they think? Will I make them happy? The phantom they. You know, this one life that you and I are given is not meant, nor is it up for negotiation. It is not up for subjugation or even retaliation. I'm sorry, but if somebody pissed you off, yeah, I said it, you don't get to get even. I mean, you can, you really can, but I want to tell you the vibration of that, that energy is so low that it absolutely is not going to have you creating from this place the high awareness of your holy and sacred true nature. And isn't that what we want to know? Isn't that what we want to be sourced from? That we want to be inspired, inspire. We want to be breathing from that. That's what we want. This life is, however, meant for celebration. It's meant for celebration. You know, the unique you that you are, all of us, we all have a role to play. We are a piece of the divine puzzle. You are a piece of the divine puzzle. Think about that for a moment. You are the divine puzzle. You are that piece. Now, you may not know if you're, you know, the flat, straight edge. You know, that always makes it faster to put it together, right? Or somewhere in the middle. But without your unique and original expression, the world isn't going to shine the same way. When you dim it down, the world dims it down. And that's part of what happens when we gear ourselves towards that phantom they, when we try to perform so that others will like us, approve of us, or accept us, or whatever it is, we tamp down our wonderful, beautiful strangeness. Thank God for that strangeness. You know, one of my favorite quotes ever was from Leo Biscaglia, um, and a million years ago, and he wrote, when people think you're crazy, it gives you a lot of leeway for behavior. Shouldn't we, yeah, exactly, applaud that. Shouldn't we all be like living from that point of view? Because why not? Why not? Why wouldn't we? You know, maybe you grew up around people who dimmed down everything. Um, maybe they tamped everything down. It was just sort of the normal routine. But that doesn't mean that it's your normal routine. It really doesn't mean that. So the thing is, I feel like often we're living lives where we're, we're wanting permission. We're looking for permission. You know, we're, who gives us the authority to be that crazy, to be that uniqueness, that radiant part of the puzzle? Who's giving us that? We have been issued already permission slips 
from the universe. You remember going on, per, on trips when you were a kid, you know, with your school, and you had to have the permission slip filled out and all of that to be able to go to the museum and see the dinosaurs or whatever the thing was. You already, oh, and then there'd be the times you'd forget to have it signed. And that was just like that sick to your stomach feeling of, oh no, I can't go, my mom didn't sign it, I had 10 days to do this and I blew it. Guess what, yours is already signed. You have universal permission. You have that permission now. And I have a couple of examples that are going to help you line, come into alignment with the truth about already having that authority to be that power and that presence that you are. You know, the topic tonight is equal with God. And you know what? I just said it, and I didn't get struck by lightning. Of course, the night's early. Okay, so Rumi wrote, you are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. What does that mean? You are the entire ocean. You're not just this one little part. Everything that is true of the ocean, that magnificent, beautiful, life-giving, life-sustaining ebb and flow is in you. It is in you. You didn't have to audition for it. You didn't have to apply for it. It's already who you are. And in Philippians, Paul's epistle to the Philippians, uh, chapter 2, verses 5 and 6, and this is my favorite one ever, ever, ever. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So in other words, let this way of thinking, let the way of thinking that, that Jesus, the teacher, Jesus the man, Jesus the healer, Jesus the divine human, the way he walked the planet, healing and knowing wholeness and recognizing it and making tuna fish sandwiches for 5,000, let that same mind think the same way. Align with that. You are no less than that. In fact, he said, you're going to do bigger things than I did. You're going to get even bigger than this. You're going to be greater than this. So think that same way because he knew, he knew, he knew from the deepest within that he already was in that form of God. He was created in the essence, in the image, in the likeness. He was that Godness in form. And he thought it not robbery. In other words, it's not a crime to declare that I'm divine. Not a crime to be divine. That's a good kind of meme, isn't it? <laughs> Somebody needs to put that on, um, on Twitter. Um, <laughs> And then here's the third one, Carlos Castaneda. In the universe, there, are, there is an immeasurable, indescribable force which shamans call intent. And absolutely everything that exists in the entire cosmos is attached to intent by a connecting link. So I'm going to go on a little bit more with this. Intent is a force that exists in the universe. So perhaps if you've been calling God, God, just for tonight, call God intent or intention. Call God the universal intention. Intent is a force that exists in the universe. When sorcerers, those who live of the source, S-O-U-R-C-E, beckon intent, claim hero, when they beckon intent, it comes to them and sets up the path for attainment. It sets up the path for attainment, which means that sorcerers always accomplish what they set out to do. Now, that's powerful. That is so powerful. I was, I, you know, it's really funny. I always find what I need when I'm working on my talks. And, and I was listening to one of my favorite ministers who is in Chicago at the Johnny Coleman Institute. And... And he quoted some stuff from Wayne Dyer's book, The Power of Intention. And I heard it in a new way because, you know, for me, and I always give, I've given talks on intention for years and I've talked about this, but intention as in that power that is source intention. It is not like, I'm going to do this. I'm like a pit bull and I'm going to do this. I'm going to climb hero, darn it. I'm going to be that hero. I'm going to do, I'm going to reach my goal to dream. The, it's not that at all. It's oh, oh, breathing and back into that place of remembering 
that you and I have been brought here as animations and celebrations of intent, the divine intention. In fact, there was another quote from here I want to share with you. Imagine that intention is not something you do, but rather a force that exists in the universe as an invisible field of energy. That is what we connect with. That's what we connected, connect with. And um, Wayne Dyer also references Patan, Patanjali, who he suggested more than 20 centuries ago, dormant forces, faculties, and talents come alive, and you discover yourself to be a greater person by far than you dreamed yourself to be. When we line up, court, are willing, say yes to this idea of this greater source, when we source that, when we are source, S-O-U-R-C-E-ers, sorcerers, sorcerers, ah, we are absolutely able to express in that flow of power and presence, infinite power and presence. You know, science of mind teaches that we're creations of God, and because we are of God, meaning of source, infinite source, we're not just similar to God, we are divine. We are divine emanations, and therefore we are transparencies for all that God is. You know, Dr. Mark has said many, many times that what is true about God is true about you and me. So when we really, really unpack that and look at what that means, what is true about God, that wisdom, that love, that, that, that just knowing, that peace, that presence, that infinite potentiality. That's not just something that, you know, those aren't just pretty words. That's the truth about who you and I are. That's what we are. That's who we are. We are here as that. What's true about God is true about us is just another way of saying what Rumi wrote and what Carlos Castaneda and the Apostle Paul wrote. So I want to break this down into a usable form so we all walk out of here somehow shifted and lifted so that we can just have a tool or two to, to work our lives in a different way. I want for everyone listening or watching to be able to, to just move back into your lives, not feeling just a little bit better, but identifying as bigger and more more worthy than you were before we started tonight. So this takes agreement. Now there's an interesting word because sometimes that's the most challenging thing to get from ourselves. You know, you can be in a meeting and, and really work the room to get agreement from everybody, alignment and agreement, so that everybody's on the same page, as they say, to, to work towards a certain goal or a certain um, idea, whatever that alignment is. But consider how hard it is to get agreement from yourself. Because what you are competing against or trying to get agreement despite of, I, I have no idea why I don't know how to create sentences anymore, but in spite of the stuff that you have going on inside, you're trying to find agreement with a greater idea. And yet, we want to argue for our limitations. We want to stay in that. We want to stay in that place that is painful and yet so darn familiar. And so the agreement I want all of us to make involves two things. The first one is to be willing, to be willing to stop living according to the demands and the expectations of that imaginary, that perceived, that made up, whatever it is, phantom they. So can we let go of the need or the, the thought that we have to be liked or approved of, especially by these people we don't even know? Can we let go of that? Life is short. I, it's time to let that one go. And then the second part of the agreement is, yeah, to stop defending and owning our limitations. Stop defending them. You know, Jonathan Livingston Siegel, when you argue for your limitations, they become yours. That's what we do. Yeah, but I just can't do that. I can't do that. I'm no, I'm no good at math. I was never good at science. I can't balance a checkbook. Um, 
let's see, nobody wants to be in a relationship with me. I just, I, I'm, I'm too old, I'm too young. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 20 pounds overweight or, or whatever it is. Would you agree to just moment by moment by moment, give it a week, I know that sounds, at face value it sounds easy, but it actually is where big growth will take place. If you will just notice yourself for a week when you limit and when you argue for your limitations, when you claim them, just notice it. Don't berate yourself, don't beat yourself up, just notice it. And then after that, in your mind, add the words, up till now, up till now. So when we claim our faults or what we think our weaknesses or our lack of knowledge, you know what, we, we, it's like we automatically invest in them. We invest in them. We put energy and thought and time and passion. So stop claiming to be less than divine. It doesn't suit you. It does not look good on you. When you think you're less than divine and you tell people you're less or you radiate that, you don't look good. Yet when you claim your divinity, oh my God, you, I could read by any one of you. When you have that light going on within, even if it's the imagine if light, it's the imagine if light. You know, last week we were taking questions from our, our Facebookers and our Zoomers, and one of the questions, which apparently raised some discussion after we had stopped the broadcast, was what do you do when you feel like it's not working? You try and you try, and you do and you do, and you really, really want to make that shift or have your life be different. What do you do? And so I know that Dean Regan, who was um, monitoring the feed and taking care of it from where he lives now on the East Coast, he suggested, and it's good advice for all of us, myself included, to go to a practitioner. Oh my goodness, go to a practitioner. Find a practitioner, get a practitioner, have a practitioner, know that you have a practitioner, work with your practitioner. Do you know what a practitioner is? A practitioner is someone who prays so beautifully and so amazingly because they already know the truth about themselves and therefore about you. And they work years to uncover the stuff that has forced them into claiming their limitations. So now they consciously seek out what they've been wanting to hold on to because it looked safe, but it was really just neurotic, and they've let it go. So go to a practitioner. And, but the thing is, when we argue for our limits, they become ours, and they become part of who we are because they're familiar. And what I would like to say to that person is part of the, the process that needs to take place is yeah, it is sometimes like a big act as if process, an act as if game. game. Yeah, it is a game where, ah, what would, how would I act if I knew I were divine? How would I be if I knew I were divine? How would I live if I knew myself the way spirit knows me? How would I be, how would I be with people if I knew I were God in form? not just resembling, resembling God or reminiscent of God or, or God adjacent, but actually knew that you were divine. And then you live from that moment by moment by moment, thought by thought, decision by decision, choice by choice, conversation by conversation. You know, the world of form likes to support us in our limitations. I was thinking of um, song titles that, that love to um, put us in that place of, of drama and whining and grief, and I know that you probably know lots of them. Um, I'll never fall in love again, right? Or have you heard about the lonesome loser? And man, we rock out to that. We groove to it, don't we? Um, I'll never smile again. Oh, woe is me. Everybody hurts crazy, right? <laughs> I got the interview wrong, interval wrong, sorry. I'll have to fix it later. We'll fix it in the mix. Um, I'm all alone, right? We love the drama. And why? Why do we do that? Um, when we stand in these limits, even though it makes us feel horrible, 
we somehow find a level of comfort because it's familiar. And it keeps us from actually dealing with the real issue. Keeps us from having to do the real work. Do the real work. Life is short, do the real work. Begin to look at that. Begin to look at that. Begin to look at what, what is familiar and painful. You know, familiarity is the foundation of all codependency. It really is. And it's the reason we don't take the risk to actually try and feel better. Just as, you know, it's, it really hurts, but they know me there. It's familiar, but, you know, they know me there. But the reason we all walked through these doors tonight or fired up Zoom or Facebook is because there's something inside of us. There's something that's calling us to reveal our truth, our divine identity. It's calling for us to reveal and to show our holy and sacred light. Our holy and sacred light, not mediocre dim light, holy and sacred light, because that's who we are, each of us. That something is our connection, our link, as Carlos Castaneda talked about, our link to source. We are all sorcerers, sorcerers, source, S-O-U-R-C-E, sorcerers. We are that. We are sorcerers. Begin to think of that. We are fully connected. We are fully connected, and we are so much greater than we dare to believe. And we're connected to so much greater something so much greater than, than our human conception even allows. Try to do it anyway. You know, when we think we're safe in our familiar pain and our limiting beliefs, we just get to have more neuroses and more pain. And we also see the world that way because the world is absolutely a reflection of what we believe about ourselves and about life because it's like this big filter. It's just like a big windshield that we have. And we're going to see through that windshield. And if your windshield is dark, you're not going to see all the light, right? And if it's cracked, it's going to be hard to see the truth. You're not going to see the wholeness. Wow, that was pretty good, wasn't it? I did, where did that one come from? Whoa, I didn't write, it, I didn't write that one down. Um, the thing about staying in our pain and in our ick is that it's, it's how we conveniently choose to not risk being vulnerable. Because vulnerability is what we have to have if we want lives of love and joy. Equal with God. Equal, equal, equal with God. So now, some tools. I promised you some tools to make this idea real and usable. And, and a few things I want you to remember. You are not in competition with God. So if you say, I am equal with God, God isn't going to go, oh, yeah, watch this. Can you do this? Is... <laughs> that would be fun, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, dueling gods. OK, it's not like that. You're not in competition with life. You're not in competition with anybody. You're not in competition with yourself. You are here for one big purpose, and it's love. You are here to love. You are here for love. Your purpose is love. Your purpose is, first of all, to be willing to step out of your safety zone, oh, everybody breathe, and to love yourself. Now, what I like to say about this is the willingness is it can be a challenge. So can we be, and, and you have to sometimes ease into it. You sort of sidestep into it. So we're willing to be willing. Oh, there's a, there's a bit of mov movement. To be willing, to be willing, to think about being willing, to be willing, to try to imagine being willing. And you might have to get 10 willings down the line before you feel a bit of a crack, right? A bit of an opening. And that's good, that's fine. <sighs> loving yourself, that's the first place. That's the first thing we do. And not because of your appearance, your talents, your connection to famous people, your good-looking mate, your fabulous shoe collection. I know that's my issue. Your money, your anything. It's not any of that. It's not any of that. You are God now. You are divine now. Remember, mm, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus 
who being of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. You're there now. You're there now. This Christ mind is already in here. It was implanted in us. You might call it your Buddha mind, your namaste mind, your light, your divine light center, whatever it is you call it. It doesn't care. God doesn't care what you call it. But it's the truth. It is the truth. Just be willing to consider, there's that word again, willing, that you are more than you think you are. You are the entire ocean in a drop. Your essence is pure love. You know, the problem isn't that you, you, you think you're not enough. It's that you think love is something entirely different than what it actually is. So it's not about not being enough. It's about not knowing what love really is. And love is a verb, okay? It's, we, we think love is about feelings and about worthiness or deservedness. It can be all of that. It can bring up all of the, the contrary ideas to that, the, the discomfort around that. You know, that's part of the idea is as we begin to get closer to love, all of our barriers to love begin to be revealed. That's good news. That means growth is happening, right? That means we're being willing to open up to a bigger idea. Love is your identity now. God is your identity now, right here and right now. So the tool that I want to give you, and this is the one where you're going to find the proof that you are love now. So the assignment, when you leave here tonight or when you turn off your computer, find at least three ways to show someone that they have value, that they matter. Just find three ways. Valuing someone else is how we uncover our value because it's within. We have to draw on our own value in order to value someone else. We have to draw on our own love in order to love someone else. When we have that sense of love, of, of sacredness, of divinity within us, it's very easy to be able to start to see it in the world. So hold a door for someone. That's love. Simple, right? Give that homeless guy down the street that you judge all the time a $5 bill, a $1 bill. Give him something. Look him in the eyes and say, I see you. I see you. Buy him a sandwich or a bottle of water, but acknowledge him. Connect deeply. Don't just hand it to him. Connect deeply. You know, I, I keep dollar bills in my car, and I have for years. And this is something that I learned from Dr. Mark about 20 years ago. I always keep ones in my car. And my family knows that if they take the ones for anything, they have to replace them. And that's because I always will give money to someone who's on the, the on-ramp. I will always do it because I don't, it's none of my business how they got there or what they're going to do with the money. However, it is my business to connect with them. And I will always look them in the eyes and say, I see you. I'm praying for you, man. I see you. I know who you are. And I have had some really incredible exchanges with people. And I begin to sense love. Pick up some trash that was dropped in the street. That's a loving action. Clean up after someone else's dog, the dog park. Right? That's love. That's love. Let someone in front of you who just tried to cut you off on the freeway. That's love. That's love. Live in service to love. You see, the moment we start taking the focus off our own limits, our hearts begin to break open. They begin to break open. Now, I didn't say that our hearts have to break. Our hearts have to break open. And for most of us, as far as, you know, do our hearts, our hearts need to break? You know, for most of us, that's already happened. This week in Buffalo, hearts broke. Lives were lost. So I didn't say hearts need to break. That's already happening on a daily basis. But they have to break open. That's how we, we have to love each other through this. We have to heal each other through the love. We have to break down, break open to break through. That's the order. And nobody gets to, to skip a step. You cannot skip the step to vulnerability and deeper presence. We talked about this the other night in practitioner class that it takes first the breaking down, then the breaking open, and then the breaking through. 
and the break, it's a sacred, sacred journey. It feels like crap sometimes, but it is the sacred journey of awareness, of, of beginning to know who you are as the hero. That's how you find that hero. When you and I finally, finally, finally start to really know ourselves as the radiant, beloved, connected, sourced, the sorcerers, the source divine beings that we already are, there will be no bandwidth at all for any of this. There, there, there won't be any bandwidth for some angry white guy with a big gun to go into a black neighborhood and shoot up a bunch of black people just because he thinks he has to do that. That's his role. You know, that all comes from fear of thinking there isn't enough. That's separation from God. But if we can all begin to heal that separation that we have within us, then there won't be bandwidth for that. There won't be bandwidth for one country invading another. There won't be the bandwidth for that because we are all seeking to lift everybody up into a higher place. You know, what is the saying? Rising water floats all boats. So know that as you and I begin to do more in service to love, more in service to caring and compassion, and, and honestly looking at our own stuff, our own stuff, that the world will rise. I absolutely know this to be so. We are in this place of evolution. We are in evolution. We are constantly evolving. So we have to be willing to get with the program, right? And it's not even that we're looking for a majority of people to get with the program. We just need critical mass to get with the program. And once we have critical mass of love, of compassion, of wholeness of health, of knowing who we are as whole beings already, then more people begin to know themselves. You know, think of that person that you know, that you hang out with sometimes, who just makes you feel so good about yourself. You see them, you're with them, and you just, you feel so, you feel good. You feel like, oh my gosh. And, you, and sometimes it's, it's so ineffable, you can't even define it. But there's something about people you're around or someone you're around and you just, oh, it's so good. Be that. You already are that. You know, we have this collective cry of why doesn't God do anything? And from deep in our collective hearts, God says, why doesn't man do anything? Why don't we do anything? You know, hope, again, is not a strategy, but love is. So this week, let the love that is the truth within you out. Demonstrate it as service, as compassion, patience, a bottle of water. Do you know how we find God? By being God. So go be God. Be God. You already are. And you already have everything you need to save this world. Go do it. Go be God. And so it is. Let's pray. Thank you. From the love of pure spirit within each of us, we connect now to the greater truth, the greater love of spirit that has brought us here together in this divinely, perfectly orchestrated, choreographed dance, the sacred dance of unfoldment of love. That this heart that is God midwives each of us into a greater knowing, and in turn, we midwife each other into a greater knowing of wholeness, of peace, of love, of worthiness, of esteem, of possibility. We are here in our uniqueness, in our, our variety as expressions of the one, of the one. We are one of the one, one with the one, one as the one. And I know for each of us now that anything, anything that has stood in between our deep experience of that, our deep expression of that, and our deep celebration of that. Whatever it is, is dissolved. It is gone. For we are willing now to stand in, in the deeper knowing, the deeper realization, the absolute foundation 
that right where we are, God is, and all is love, all is joy, all is compassion, because those are the qualities of God, and God is that presence that is everywhere equally present, whose center is everywhere, whose circumference is nowhere, that God is centered in us. God is centered in me, in you, in all life. We dare to claim that. We dare now to claim that and to be that and to live as that. And within each of us, we hear that voice that says, go be God now. And we say, yes, 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 yes. And the universe, which has only one answer, says, yes, yes, yes. And we are each lifted up and we are healed in whatever ways we need to be healed so that we can be even more loving in this world. And in that, all that we ever have need of is absolutely right here and right now present within us and in our lives. The health the loving relationships, the spiritual peace and connection, the prosperity. We are that, and we choose to be that, and we express that with, with glory, with enthusiasm, with imagination, with audacity, for that is who and what we are. We choose now to be audacious God. How wonderful to do that and to be that. And I know that as we do that, we allow our, our love, our hearts to extend around this entire planet. And I see us now each holding and hugging beings in Buffalo, those who have been touched in some way, whether knowing someone or just knowing of someone that in this place, where there is a violation. We know that there is a healing that takes place that is about peace. Is it, about, it is about compassion and service and caring, for that is why we are here. We midwife each other. And I know for us that we no longer need the big evolutionary triggers to bring us to a place of love. We let go of that. We no longer need to have a country invade a country or a, a, a confused, fearful, hating young man to bring a gun into a supermarket. We no longer need those events. So I know and I declare that we know right now that love happens in our deep awareness so we don't have to be shaken to awaken. We are available now to love. And in that, all of that other stuff dissolves. God, you got our attention. Love, you have our attention. We're here. We're present. So I bless this teaching. I bless this church. I bless everyone here. I bless all paths to God, all churches everywhere, all ashrams, all mosques, all synagogues, all temples, all encampments under an overpass because that's where life is. That's where love lies waiting so we acknowledge that, knowing that we are one with the one. And how good to know that we can bless, that we can bring forth love and blessing, and that love can lift all of us up. I am grateful for this. I release this word into law, knowing it does not return to me void. It absolutely returns to me fulfilled because I claim it and know that that hero says yes, that hero within. We claim it, we name it, and we say yes, and so it is. Amen. Amen. Mm. Don't go. <laughs> Strike with my face.
<laughs> All right. Ah, what are we doing now? We're doing an offering of some sort, aren't we? I have the wrong bulletin here. I have Sundays. Um, okay. So, do we sing I am so blessed? We don't. I got it. Thank you very much. I've always relied on the. Um, I'm a stranger. <laughs> thank you, but you're, <laughs> but you're not a stranger. I'm stranger than you. So, uh, all right. So I invite you to take your offering and to just thank you very much and to hold it in your hand to your heart. And even if it's just that symbol or the thought of that offering, since we have a box out there and you can give online, ah, and to say with me. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Amen. Catherine O'Hara. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We are all loved and appreciated here. And thank you for everyone who has served here this evening, for uh, Tina and Sam for their music and support, for our fabulous tech crew that is here for us every Wednesday night, for the, and for those that are here in person and those who have attended, because we wouldn't be here without you. We thank you so very much. I have a few announcements to read. For those, um, we make it really easy for those to uh, give donations to our church. You can text the word give. Uh, it's inside your program, or there's a QR code, which is that little fuzzy square thing on the back of your program. And you can just uh, click that with your camera, and it will take you so you can go ahead and give. Otherwise, you can just go to nhcrs.org slash give and take care of it that way. Prayer with a Practitioner will be available after service, both in person and on Zoom. And as Reverend Sidney was saying, get a practitioner. We really work at it. Our Wednesday evening service next week will be at 6.50 with a pre-service um, meditation. And the service will begin at 7 p.m. And Reverend Sidney uh, will be sharing the topic, Spiritual Overdraft Protection. Does this work for my bank account? <laughs> Regular prayer and spiritual practice are for the purpose of revealing and living from the innate divinity. Oh, I like that. But becoming conscious is a not one-off. Daily investment in, spiritual, in spirit produces high returns in peace, love, and joy. 
Living a Course in Miracles will be this Thursday evening, May 19th, with practitioner Jeannie Laporte. She'll be doing this on Zoom from 7.15 to 9.15 p.m. Everyone is welcome. Drop-ins are welcome. You don't have to be a regular attendee. She will just love and support you, and you will guaranteed get something wonderful from it. Our grief support group will be facilitated by practitioner Kara Winninger, Winninger this Sunday at 1 p.m., also on Zoom. And remember, we're, we grieve for all kinds of things. We grieve for what's going on in the world, and sometimes it's overwhelming. We grieve for the loved ones. We grieve for jobs. We grieve for housing, for cars, for, uh, for the hungry. So this is a good place to lift your spirits and, and get the support that you're looking for. And if you would like the spiritual adventure of a lifetime, it is coming up this October with Dr. Mark on his trip to Japan. Details are available on the website where you may also sign up. And I've gone on two trips with him and they are just beyond expectation. It's a wonderful opportunity and a great gift to give yourself. And the science, uh, scientific Christian mental practice class part one with Dr. Mark Vieira will be um, six Mondays beginning June 6th on Zoom only from 6.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, sign up is on the website for this remarkable uh, class based on the teachings of Emma, Emma Curtis Hopkins, one of our favorite teachers. The book, uh, Scientific Christian Mental Practice, um, was known as the, and she, Emma was known as the teacher of teachers and is one of the major influences on our fund, was one of the major influencers on our founder, Ernest Holmes. The cost is $150, and believe me, it's a bargain. Save the date, um, Memorial Day, Weekend. for 2022 uh, Sunday celebration, which is going to be on uh, May 29th. At our 1130 service, we will be Zooming and Facebooking this as well as doing it in person. And it is a time to remember, to invite the members, to recommit, to renew, to invite practitioners, to recommit and rewire. Install Reverend Dr. Sidney. Finally. Yay, she will be official and legal and as our assistant minister. And then refire afterwards with a delicious barbecue and party for kids and adults. So wonderful. It'll be our first summer barbecue and get together. So yay for that. If you or a loved one could use some enhanced spiritual support, we have a practitioner, or I'm sorry, a pra okay, we have a pastoral care team ready to help you. Please reach out to our team through our website. Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services is available and Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. Yes, we have some regular morning Zoomers here. Okay, visit our website at NH nhcrs.org to obtain Zoom links and more information about our events and sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. Thank you for all who just tolerated all my uh, little errors. Oh, well, it keeps me humble, sort of. Uh, and now, Reverend Sidney will give us our benediction. Um, you know, announcements are like flossing. Nobody wants to do it, but we really need to have um, them. <laughs> we need to know what's going on. I have to work on that metaphor. Um, by the way, on Sunday, I will be speaking, and my topic is pearls and pigs. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, only not. I remember the White Album. Yeah. We're dating ourselves, you know. Yeah. I heard about it from my grandmother. OK, so um, uh, what else do I want to say? Yeah, make sure you come to our barbecue on that May 29th. Uh, it's the Memorial Day Sunday. It's going to be really fun. Bounce house, face painting. I ordered a whole ton of water balloons. What was I thinking? OK, so let's pray out. Yeah, go, yeah no one's going home dry. Oh, so we are grateful, once again, as we just acknowledge that the energy in this room, the enthusiasm, the wonder, the laughter, all of that is God. That is God going on. We got God going on. So I know that as we move out into the world, we keep God going on. There's nothing else we could be 
And yes, we go for crazy because that is absolutely our wheelhouse. And we redefine it as being unique, beautiful, loved, and audaciously God-like. We declare it, and we are grateful. Uh, that's it. Amen. And so it is. <laughs> I'm out. Mic drop. I'm out. <laughs> Thank you.